Honey Bee Honey here. Today I'm making high bodies. Thought I'd show you uh, my method of making high bodies. I've got this method, you know, from years and years of uh, practice, basically. And so the method I'm going to show you today is to use uh, deck screws. Now you can do it as simple as some nails, a hammer, and and your high bodies, and just hammer them together. But uh, about three years after, or four years after, at least where I'm from, uh, what will happen is that the wood will start to bow out on the corners here. Uh, usually the frame rests. What will happen is the, the wood will usually bow out, usually at the frame rests here. This will start to come apart and I actually recently just changed the hive into new equipment that was a friend of mine's and it had bowed out so far that the frames had actually fallen off the frame rests there. Uh, so you can do it as easy as that, or uh, you know what I like to do is do it so you'll never have to mess with it again. So that's the method I'm going to show you today. So you'll need a few tools. Uh, like I said, hammer. I'm still going to use one nail on every corner. Uh, a square is pretty handy. A drill or an impact wrench, one or the other. I use both just so I don't have to change bits. Uh, some type of glue tray. You'll need some glue. This is heavy duty construction adhesive. And uh, once this stuff sets, you know, you really don't need the screws or the nails in there. So you, I've never done it that way because I don't, I, you know, I, I do a little overkill. I want to make sure that I never have to repair hive bodies again. So you'll need a caulking gun. These are uh, Beekeeper's best friend when it comes to any type of repair or construction of uh, bee equipment. These are uh, like ratchet clamps or you know, it used to be called pipe, pipe clamps when they're on a pipe. This is the same thing, but this is a hand version of it. Uh, you'll need your deck screws. This is a glue applicator, paper towels, and that's about what you'll need. So uh, a couple of the things that you want to be aware of when constructing high bodies is that they have hand holds on them. Now these, these sides don't need, uh, they're kind of hard to put in backwards pretty much impossible. But these sides you can put in backwards. So you can put it in like this with a handhold inside as opposed to this with a handhold on the outside. So always watch and make sure you put these handholds on the right side or you'll find one on the inside of the high body. Okay, I'm pretty much ready to go. I'll talk as I, as I work here. Um, and then I'll probably, when I actually start to do the construction and everything, I'll probably change the camera angle so that you can see closer to what I'm doing. Uh, right now I'm just getting the glue ready to go because the first step what we're going to do is we're going to glue everything and we're going to glue all the joints first and I like to just put enough glue in this tray so that it'll it'll cover at least one of the, the ends. So I usually do this in my garage but it's really cold out. So apply the glue, and again, uh, you know, the gluing I would say is the most critical part, and it's also the least amount of fun. But uh, it's the most critical part because this glue can act as a standalone once once the hive is actually, you know, once the glue has set, it can actually be strong enough, according to uh, what I've heard anyway it can be strong enough to hold these hives together without having any type of fastener in there. Start off by making sure you got the right side. Hand holds are out. Start by assembling it like so. I try to keep it. Make sure your hand holds are upright. Although with the certain high bodies like these ones here, it's 
They, they have to be. Okay, I've got a rubber mallet. All we're doing right now is constructing assembling basically. I'm not going to be fastening anything yet. And so we're going to turn this over on the next step. So what you want to do is wipe as much of this glue off as you can on this side is for sure. Now when you start to fasten things, more glue is going to come out. And you'll have to do another wipe down. But basically what this process entails is assembling the hive, hive body like this, clamping it with those big clamps, make sure, making sure it's square, and then, and then go ahead and then you know, installing your fasteners. So, so just to keep a clean workspace, try to get as much of that glue off as you can, that adhesive. Uh, then glue your next piece. You got this made. Now just turn it over. Install this piece. You can tell it's not quite square. You can set it down. Now apply your clamps. Now you can try to square it up right here, but your clamps may move it. So just stick the square in there, and you'll move one corner. You know, you'll move them back and forth. So you got it square. your clamps. So these smaller clamps work better. On the smaller size. And they don't have to be right next to the joint. In fact, you really don't want them next, right? Absolutely next to the joint. But once you get those corners in there tight, as far as you need to go. That's still square. And then I bought these because they, actually I bought these first, but I used them like this so that you can actually go right over these other clamps. Now these I like to get a little closer to the joint, but remember you're going to have to be putting screws in. So ideally since you're putting these clamps up on top, you'll start your gluing and screwing right there at the top. So you got glue squirting out now, but I typically uh, start sinking screws and nails here. So I look at each side, it doesn't really have to be um, uh, any particular side, but what I look for is gaps. So, if, so on this side there's a gap, but on this side there's not a gap. So I want to close the gap first on the side that has one versus one that doesn't. So I drill my... Okay, so that, that's a drill with a countersink. Drill that in there. Now that side is sunk. I can do the top of this one here. Basically you just kind of work your way around the hive. Doing this.
So at the end, what you want to do is drill a hole right here, but not don't countersink it, just drill the hole. Just, just through this little lip there. You just want a hole through there. Grab a nail. And put some glue on it. And then just sink that with your hammer. And that will help keep that little, that's also the, the weakest part of the joint is right there. This little lip because it's only half the, the width of the rest of the high joint. And you get some glue squirting out of there. You want to get that off your hammer as quick as you can. And off the high body. And that's one entire side. So what I'll do now is change the camera view so you can see kind of what I'm doing. Okay, you can see that at the top, of course, I got the clamps on at the top. At the top, it's sunk real nice here. There's a little gap here, a little gap there. So what I want to do is close this gap first and then work my way down this side. Alternatively, instead of clamping all four corners and stuff, what you can do is square it. I just did that with the inside, put my square still in there. And then compress one side so that, so I'm compressing from here, so these pieces, at least in the middle, it looks like all the way through, are compressed all the way to seat against this. So then what you do is you drill the holes opposite that, right around your clamp. And I usually do two sides at once. And then put screws in. Until they see. Just, just a little bit. And take your clamp off quickly here because that glue is drying as we speak. Make sure everything is seated all the way down those two nail or uh, screws you put in there. And they are. Just tighten them up for good measure. And then there's one in the middle that you can hit. For sure. Which is basically where that clamp was. And so using this method, it's easiest to do it as I did in the center, rather than one side or another. And so now you're working from the center out. So I'm going to repeat this procedure on the other side, but when I get back to this side, I'll be drilling two, two holes up and one down and work myself from center out rather than from one side down. So that's an alternative method you can use. Uh, next step, of course, is to paint it. Now, I just want to talk real quick about painting. Uh, some people, beekeepers, like to delight in saying, uh, you know, that their bees don't care if their hive, is, if hive equipment is painted or not. And uh, you paint your hive bodies because you want them to last. You're protecting your investment. 
So buy a good paint, anything but a flat. Uh, use a primer coat, two coats of paint minimum. Uh, like I said, use a satin semi-gloss gloss, something like that, because what you're looking for is a smooth finish on the outside. From time to time, you'll have to clean them. Use the same paint for your supers as you do your hive bodies. You know, once you're done extracting, there's going to be honey dripping down the side, and you want, you want to be able to get that off pretty easy. If you use a flat paint, it ends up uh, being hard to remove the honey, harder, and at the same time remove some of the paint. So use a good quality paint. You're protecting your investment. This was twenty dollars. This whole thing right here was about a hundred bucks, and I've got four more of those down in my garage. So you know, you're talking about five hundred dollars worth of equipment here. Uh, you want to make it to last forever. Uh, you don't want to ever have to really maintain it other than re repaint it. So uh, that's what you want to do. This thing is will last a lifetime. And then also you paint them because you don't want uh, to, you know, have have an eyesore in somebody's yard. If you're using an out yard and you're on someone else's property, you don't want this your bee equipment to be an eyesore for them. You want it to be you know to, to look nice so uh, there's different methods of painting or protecting your investment I've seen guys dip it in beeswax or wax not beeswax uh, seemed like a fascinating thing to do I'm sure a wax coating would be great um, I've seen people use uh, stains I tried the stain for a while with a clear coat I tried fiberglass resin and uh, Helmsman urethane spar urethane didn't hold up so I hate painting and uh, I want something that's going to last 10 to 15 years so I use a really good quality just paint. Um, the fiberglass resin lasted less than a year. I tried again a fiberglass resin with urethane on top. That lasted less than two years. Uh, it was just I eventually just sanded down the hives and repainted them. So uh, protect your investment. Make sure it's done right the first time and uh, it'll last your lifetime.